This lesson is part two of parametric equations. Today our objectives remain the same as they were yesterday. Um, it's just that today we're going to look at a little bit more difficult examples. So let's start with number one here, which actually looks really similar to the problems we saw in our previous lesson. So I definitely know that these two parametric equations are going to give me an ellipse, um, but this time the interval here for t is defined from 0 to pi only as opposed to 0 to 2 pi. So we definitely have to think about that and how it's going to affect our graph. So let's start by uh, isolating cosine of t. So we have x over 4 equals the cosine of t and y over 3 equals the sine of t. So now using my identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, I end up with x over 4 squared plus y over 3 squared equals 1. So I know that this is going to be the equation for an ellipse. So let me just trace out that ellipse first, and then we will discuss how we can only trace out the portion that relates to our specific interval here from 0 to pi. Okay, so it's going to be elongated in the x direction, so I have vertices at negative 4, 0, and 4, 0. And I will have covertices at 0, 3 and 0, negative 3. So this would be the ellipse that I would graph. And this would be from 0 to 2 pi. However, um, we're only going from 0 to pi. So what we need to do is figure out where, uh, when time is 0, where our position is. And when time is pi, where our position will be. So at 0 seconds, our x position will be given by 4 times the cosine of 0, and our y position will be given by 3 times the sine of 0. So I have x equals 4 and y equals 0. So at time equals 0, I'm here at 4, 0. Now, if we find when time is equal to pi, so after pi seconds here, we have 4 times the cosine of pi, and y equals 3 times the sine of pi. Well, here we get x equaling negative 4, and here we get y equals 0. So this is the other coordinate. So time equals uh, pi is at the point negative 4, 0. The problem with this is that it's skipping too far into the next quadrant here. We can't tell, is that direction of motion going this way or this way? And that's how we would decide you know, which portion of our, our ellipse to graph. So instead, I'm going to have to actually find um, a value in between that. So I wouldn't suggest using the endpoints instead. We're going to do uh, when time is pi over 2. So if we have x equals 4 times the cosine of pi over 2, and y, the position here, is going to be found by 3 times the sine of pi over 2. Now we end up with x equaling 0 and y equaling positive 3. So at 0, positive 3 here, time is equal to pi over 2. So this indicates that your position is going to move in this direction here as time increases. And once we get to time equals um, pi, then we stop with this graph. So this is going to be the overall portion of that ellipse that I graph. And I'm going to indicate the direction of motion here with these arrows. All right, and that's the end of problem number one. Now number two is a pretty similar question of what we saw yesterday because our interval for t is back to the same 0 to 2 pi. Um, this time, however, we have x equals 4 times the cosine of 2t and y equals 5 times the sine of 2t. Now when we eliminate our parameter, it doesn't matter the fact that we have that cosine of 2t here. So I'm still going to isolate the cosine and sine, um, just like I normally would. And then I can use my identity still, because the cosine squared of 2t plus the sine squared of 2t is also equal to 1. So I have x over 4 squared plus y over 5 squared equals 1. So this doesn't look any different than any normal equation for an ellipse. And in fact, when I graph this, it's going to look the same also. So when I graph this, uh, this time it's elongated in the y direction, so I have vertices at uh, 0, 5 and at 0, negative 5. And I have covertices at 4, 0 and negative 4, 0. All right, so there's our ellipse. Now, the difference between the cosine of t and the cosine of 2t, this time our point, if we think of t as time again, our point, our xy position, is moving twice as fast around this ellipse. So it actually makes two full rotations around your ellipse. So at time is 0, our xy position is going to be defined by the cosine of 2 times 0, which is still 0, and y equals the uh, 5 times the sine of 2 times 0, which is still just 0. So we have the coordinate for 0. So we start here when time is 0. Now if I move to, let's say, pi over 2, Okay, if I move to pi over 2 and I have x equals 4 times the cosine of 2 times pi over 2, which is really now I'm calculating the value of the cosine of pi. Okay, so this is what I mean about moving twice as fast. So, <coughs> excuse me, this coordinate now is negative 4, and the y value, if 
I calculate 5 times the sine of 2 times pi over 2. Now I'm really calculating 5 times the sine of pi, which is going to give me 0. So I went from uh, this coordinate t equals 0 at, at 4, 0, and at time is pi over 2, I'm all the way over here at negative 4, 0. So it's definitely moving faster than, than it did before. Um, now it, it's harder to tell the direction of motion here. Um, so you'd probably want to calculate t equaling pi over 4, which is going to give you this coordinate right here. Um, so our direction of motion is counterclockwise. Okay, um, but it's just moving around that circle that, or I'm sorry, the ellipse, it looks like a circle, but it's an ellipse. It's moving around that ellipse twice as fast. So it makes two full rotations. So this would be at time equals pi. We're right back here. And if you want to see and verify, you can just plug in time equals pi right into here. And you're going to see that you get the exact same coordinate. Um, and then it goes around one more time and back to the point four zero. So that's all that happens basically when you have uh, a value here that's not just the cosine of t or the sine of t. Okay. Now I wanted to put a problem like number three on here because I think it's important that uh, you see an example where it's not going to always just be an ellipse. We've been doing a bunch of problems where they're always um, ellipses. Now in this case, when I use my um, identity, I end up with the equation x over 5 squared plus y over 5 squared equals 1. So it looks the same as what we've normally been doing. But this time, um, this equation here can be rewritten in a different form. If I multiply by 25 throughout, I end up with x squared plus y squared equals 25, which actually um, describes the equation for a circle. So this would be the graph of a circle. And I mean, obviously, you'd be able to tell just based off of this that there's no elongation. You know, it's the same exact um, distance in the x and y direction. Um, but, you know, I think it's important for you to be able to manipulate the equation to make it look like a circle. So this would have a radius of 5 and a center at 0, 0. So the radius is 5 because you take the square root, right? And then the center is at 0, 0. So when we graph this, it's not really all that special, but um, let's pretend like that's 5, 0, 0, 5, and negative 5, 0. Oh, that's an awesome circle. But um, the only thing you have left to do then is to find the direction of motion here. I'll let you guys try that and then check with the key so you know how to find the direction of motion for this particular graph. And then lastly, I just want you to note that parametric equations with a sine and cosine function always describe circles and ellipses, okay? All right, number four, we're going to continue to eliminate the parameter. This time, though, our parametric equations are defined a little bit differently than we've seen in our previous examples. Here I have x equaling e to the t and y equaling e to the 2t. And then for my uh, interval for t, it says t is in this uh, notation here is just saying the set of real numbers. So we haven't used this notation much, um, but... All that that symbol means is it's saying that t, our time, is within the set of real numbers, okay? All right, so let's begin here. We're going to try to eliminate our parameter. So remember, when you eliminate the parameter, you're trying to isolate t in one of your parametric equations so that you can make a substitution into the other. Now, what I'm going to do is look at x equals e to the t, and I'm going to try to isolate t. Now, in order to isolate t, I have to take the natural log of both sides, so I can... Um, the inverse operation, basically, of an exponential is to take the log of both sides. So I'm going to take the log, the natural log, on both sides. So I end up with, since these are inverse operations, t on the right-hand side equaling the natural log of x. Okay, So t is equal to the natural log of x. So this is just a review, obviously, of solving logarithms. Um, and then I'm going to make that substitution into the other parametric equation. So I have y equals e to the 2 times, this time it's the natural log of x. Now I'm going to use a little bit of um, my properties here. I know that when I have 2 times the natural log of x, that's the same as the natural log of x squared. Okay. And now when I try to simplify this, I have e to the natural log. Remember, these are inverse operations of one another. So I end up with y equals x squared. So the graph here is going to be a parabola. Since I've eliminated the parameter, now I just have a rectangular equation that's really quite easy to graph. y equals x squared. Whoops, and I messed up because I should not show that uh, where the direction of motion is until I figured out what that direction of motion is. Okay, so um, I'd suggest that you guys try that one again on your own and then check with the key to make sure you understand how to write your direction of motion here. All right, in our final example here, we're supposed to sketch a parametric curve um, that's defined by a linear equation and then a quadratic, okay? Now, um, again, you want to try to eliminate your parameter here, so I'm going to solve for t, 
And then I'm gonna make this substitution into the other parametric equation. So I end up with y equaling x minus five, the quantity, <clears throat> squared plus one. So now that I've eliminated the parameter, I wanna graph this rectangular equation, which I recognize to be a parabola with a vertex at five, one. So I have a vertex here at five, one. And I know that this parabola will open up. Uh, it's not um, stretched or shrunk at all. So that would be just a general graph of a parabola. Well, obviously, I don't want to have the arrows in there because uh, I don't want to indicate a direction of motion quite yet. But I also can't graph this, um, you know, just a nor normal parabola because I'm supposed to graph these parametric equations within this specific interval for t. So what I need to do is figure out what t is going to, when t is negative two, where our position is. And when t is three, where our position is, and then I can graph only the points in between, okay? So when t is equal to negative two, my x, y position is gonna be given by three, and the y value here is gonna equal five. So I'm just plugging in again, negative two for t. When t is equal to three, then I have the point uh, x is equal to 8 and y is equal to 9. So I only want to graph the portion of the parabola that falls between 3, 5, and 8, 9. So if I look at my x value, 3, 5 is about, let's say here, and 8, 9 uh, is about, I don't know, up here. Okay. Now in between are the x values here, so from x is equal to uh, 3, all the way to x equals 5, and then from 5 all the way to x equals 8. So that would be the portion of the graph that uh, falls within this particular interval. So now I'm just going to go ahead and label these um, when time is equal to negative 2. I'm at the point 3, 5. And when time is equal to 3, I'm at the point 8, 9. So there's my position. So as you can see, the direction of motion is pretty clear here because as t increased, so it went from negative two to three, um, we jumped from this point to this point. And if we're following this, this curve, this parametric curve, it's gotta go in this direction here. So that would be the graph here uh, for problem five. So I just wanna recap everything that we've talked about so far. Um, we've got two basic methods when we are trying to graph parametric equations. Um, you're gonna select your various values of t and calculate an x and a y, and that's just by plotting your points and indicating the direction of motion. So this is using a table, so that's method one. Now, the second type is to attempt to eliminate your parameter by solving for t in one equation and replacing t into the other equation um, where you can use an identity and our sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one is a really popular one. But if you can't eliminate the parameter, um, I'm sorry, if you can eliminate the parameter, then the equation represents the path of the curve, but it doesn't contain information about the direction of motion, so you'll still need to plot points, okay? Now, um, I, don't, I don't say this, but if you can't eliminate the parameter, then you're gonna have to resort back to the table method, um, in which case you'll have to plot enough points so you get a good idea of what the shape is. All right, that is the end of the lesson. Um, tomorrow we'll move on to polar curves.